everybody, this is Amrit Maldonado from the Panther team here at Prolifix. Thank you for joining us again. i um, got a special um, video here for you all today. I have a guest, Glenn Silverberg, who will be helping me today in my video. Uh, basically, what we'll be doing today is kind of talking about um, a tutorial video that I released a couple of years ago. And in these tutorial videos, I go through modernizing a Panther client server application to the web. There are four videos in this series of videos. So before every video, we will kind of give a prelude to it and I'll have Glenn help me talk about, I'll give his opinion on how, what technology was applied to model, modernizing um, each of these screens here. So uh, let's start off and uh, Glenn, you introduce yourself, Glenn. Hi, my name is Glenn Silverberg. I'm a senior developer at Prolifix. Um, I've been working uh, on the Panther for NGM before that for about 30 years. So uh, I have a lot of experience uh, helping to develop the product uh, as well as fix fixing bugs in the product. Um, so uh, I'll help out with this uh, tutorial as best I can. Thank you, Glenn. Yep, he's he's been around. He's been around for a bit. Um, great. And I'm sure lots of you are listening to the videos. This video have somehow the last 30 years got an email for Glenn. I uh, heard some of his, his uh, great videos on our Panther channel. You're All right. Welcome. So for our, for our second video here, part two, I cover um, applying CSS, cascading, cascading style sheets to your Panther screens or your Panther HTML templates. This is part two here. So, so Glenn, why, you know, I get the whole CSS concept of controlling your look and feel, but, you know, at this point, you know, controlling it from your Panther colors or Panther sizes or Panther fonts, that will not surface, correct? That will not work. It has to be done. Yeah, it's, it's always a it's a struggle to find the right balance. I I think for for a product which is used in different ways by different people. Some customers who have built their applications, if it's a, if they have built a Panther client application uh, for the desktop. Um, they chose certain colors they wanted to use, perhaps for various uh, things in in their uh, in their interface. And some of those people might want to retain the, those same colors, uh, same fonts that they use for their uh, desktop application. So we support that. Um, but CSS is a really good way to override um, or to sort of give you a, a global look to your application. Um, and you can do it, uh, the most logical way is based upon the context of how certain um, certain elements of your application are used. So, for example, if you have a, you might have a screen that has something that looks like a, like a spreadsheet, and you might have a total uh, at the bottom of some column, and maybe you want all of your totals to be highlighted with a certain color. Mm -hmm. um, so that widget might just be a it might be a single line text widget in Panther, um, but you might want that total, uh, you, you don't necessarily want all single line text widgets, which uh, result in uh, input, uh, input tags in your HTML. You don't necessarily want them all to look the same way. You want your colors perhaps to be based upon the context in which you're using that. So if it's a total, you want maybe you want all totals to be uh, highlighted in yellow or something. So that's one way you could use CSS. And uh, and even in Panther desktop applications, uh, we support global ways that you can manipulate color or font. Uh, we have uh, support for that in Windows um, using our uh, WinCMap file or um, using uh, just making use of the the Windows uh, color, you know, color schemes. Right. 
All right, for exercise number two, we will be working with CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. What we will do is we will attach a different HTML file to our login screen, and that HTML file has a reference to a CSS file. And this CSS file will basically add more colors, add a prettier layout, um, nicer looking fonts, and so on. I'll, it also adds some, um, some images. So right now, this is what our login screen looks like, as we saw earlier. Great. So what we'll do in exercise two is we will, um, we will actually attach, replace login1.html with login2.html. All right, go to my login screen, replace one with two, press OK. Save it, and let's go ahead and refresh our screen in the browser, and look what we've got here. You know, we've got a nice looking box here, all using CSS, um, images. Look how nicely aligned these push buttons are. Little messages here. A nice border that has the name of our application. So, very nice. Um, you can you can also go down and make additions, uh, make changes to your login CSS file. Let's check out our login CSS file. Okay, it's actually the login to CSS. This is our CSS file, right? So these are the different classes that are defined: a login page class, a login form class and so on, and these are all being referenced in our login to the HTML. Notice line number six, how login to that CSS is being called from a login to that HTML. We can make a quick change here. Um, I think we were asked to change um, line number five, right? Change the width of that box to maybe 300, saving it. Refreshing my screen. Notice how wide this is. Now when I refresh my screen, it narrows it up. All right, so let me go and undo this. And saving it. And refreshing my screen. And it goes back to normal. All right, so all we've learned here is to actually adjust and format the look and feel of our Panther HTML file using CSS. Thanks for watching our video. If you like the video, please press the like button. If you're viewing our content for the first time, please press the subscribe button. If you have any queries, either post them in the comment section or email us at support at prolifics.com.